Hello people, in this video we want to look at Chalazion. Chalazion is a disorder of eyelid. So, uh, it is an inflammatory disorder of the eyelid. So, this is a Chalazion. As you can see, there are many disorders of eyelid and Chalazion is a, a non-infective, painless condition. It's very common also. So, here what is affected is the meibomian gland. Okay, the duct gets blocked and hence the secretions stay inside the gland. And this becomes a chalazion. It is uh, there's no bacteria inside it, hence it is a mybomia. It is a non-infective. It is non-infective, okay? And but it is very common. You should understand that. And if it gets infected, the same chalazion converts into what is called as an internal hordeolum, okay? So look at the upper eyelid here, and look at the lower eyelid here, okay? Here, whatever you see in blue, they have marked that is the mybomian gland right the meibomian gland here and here and there are more meibomian glands in the upper eyelid this is the meibomian gland if this gets blocked right and the secretions stay inside it is called as a chalazion if it is infected then it becomes an internal hordeolum it is possible that a chalazion can get infected and become an internal hordeolum okay this chalazion is also called as a meibomian cyst or a tarsal cyst right um, it is a chronic condition. It's slowly it will grow this one. It is non-suppurative, right? And uh, it is a lipogranulomatous infection, inflammation. So what is there in this? It's not pus. What is there inside it? Lipogranulomatous uh, inflammation it is. Okay, this is commonest of all lid lumps. So lid lumps commonest will be chalazion. And it's very important for exam. So these are the glands of uh, eyelids. There are so many glands. You have meibomian glands in that. These are modified sebaceous gland. What glands are meibomian glands, guys? Meibomian glands are modified sebaceous glands. These are more in upper eyelid, 30 to 40. And the ducts of these glands open where? In the eye, uh, in the lid margin. That is my in meibomitis. When all the exit of these ducts are clogged, it becomes meibomitis. See, this is an image of mybomitis, right? Where all the <clears throat> mybomian gland ducts exit, that path is clogged. This is mybomitis, but that is a type of blepharitis. But here we are discussing chalazion, which is called as what? Mybomian cyst. So you should understand the difference between mybomitis and mybomian cyst. If they ask mybomian cyst, it is chalazion. That is what we are looking at here. Okay. <clears throat> here what actually happens, the, it is clogged, right? And there is secretions accumulating inside. That is a chalazion. So here they are showing you the same thing. Mybomian gland and the opening of the mybomian gland. So did you understand the concept guys? If this is the eyelid and uh, let us say this is a closed eyelid. And here you have the mybomian uh, ducts of the glands. Here you will have the, where is it? Okay, here you have the exit. Now this one, this one got blocked, right? So this will accumulate all the sebaceous secretions, lipogranulomatous inflammation inside. This is a chalazion. If, if the, <clears throat> if this is the eyelid and all the exit pathways are blocked in the lid margin, that becomes mybomitis. Chalazion etiology, why does it happen? Because people are always rubbing their eyes, they are touching, so they are clogging, infecting, irritating, carrying some bacteria there. Usually how this chalazion happens is because uh, are, uh, initially there is a small infection with a low grade, uh, low virulence organism which blocks this uh, exit. So if this is the gland and here the infection, there is an infection only initially which is, uh, which is uh, of a very low virulence organism, the ducts, uh, uh, is, the ducts are blocked. This is where it starts. Okay. Then what happens, the secretions that are being made are accumulating inside right the lipogranulomatis the sebum the secretion so secretions are retaining inside so here they are saying that the retention of secretions will cause the enlargement that will become uh, these secretions which are fatty in nature they act ir like irritant and they excite a non-infective lipogranulomatis infection inflammation don't use the word infection sorry inflammation here what are the symptoms of these people? They have a painless swelling in the eyelid, gradually increasing in size. The he heaviness of the lid will be there. Yes, you can see that. Blurred vision can occur because this can put a pressure inside, right, on the eye, say on the cornea. So these people can have astigmatism, where you can see they'll have multiple focal points like this, right? They can have astigmatism. 
and uh, because of this um, uh, uh, chalazion the lower puncta the lower puncta can get everted the lower puncta can get everted so what will happen <clears throat> the drainage of the tears will not be there so when the tears cannot exit via the lacrimal sac etc this person will start having epiphora okay so it will look like the chalazion guy is crying So these are the symptoms. Now let us move on to the signs. Signs that you will notice as a doctor. You will see that there is a nodule which is slightly away from the lid margin. Yes, it is slightly away from the lid margin. It is firm to hard. It is non-tender. That means this pain is a painless condition. And usually upper eyelid is more involved. Now the lid upper eyelid it contains more meibomian glands. That you know that is why it will be like that. Inside when you avert the eyelid you lift the eyelid and see inside there will be a reddish purple area <clears throat> reddish purple reddish and purple area inside okay and uh, uh, this is how it will look inside then how will uh, if this uh, chalazion and the secretions are getting accumulated near the margin if they are getting accumulated near the margin it will be called as marginal chalazion okay if it is marginal right you should understand <clears throat> you should try to differentiate it from styes because styes are not involving meibomian gland but this one is involving what the meibomian gland so that is where it becomes a chalazion chalazion meibomian gland okay uh, clinical course and complications so spontaneous resolution can occur by itself this guy will become happy in life or slowly it keep growing 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 and um, but this can burst inside if it bursts inside the inside palpebral conjunctiva side if it bursts then in that uh, there can be fungating mass of granulation so fungating mass of granulation tissue may be formed occasionally when the lesion bursts on the conjunctival side okay then we already told you this chalazion if it gets infected it can become what is called as an internal horny ulum also this can undergo calcification and it can become hard what do you say okay it can become calcified the worst thing here is so far so good everything was nice right but here <clears throat> they are dropping a bomb here and saying that malignant change in can occur into meibomian gland adenocarcinoma so it can become cancerous okay sebaceous cell carcinoma in elderly it can become cars cancer <clears throat> What is the treatment, guys? We are moving on to treatment. How is it going, Chalazion? Let's look at the treatment. So, treatment is uh, you help in self resolution by giving hot fomentation, topical antibiotics, oral anti-inflammatory drugs. So, I think this is not uh, self resolution if you are giving antibiotics and anti-inflammatory. This is more like conservative treatment. Now, let us say <clears throat> this uh, Chalazion is very close to the puncta. Let's say somewhere uh, here, this cell. Uh, let us say the uh, Chalazion is somewhere here, very near the puncta. So if it is very near the puncta, they will do something called as an intralesional injection of long-acting steroid, like try ami see no loan. Try ami see no loan. Try ami see no loan is an intralesional injection. You will inject into the lesion, is it? Looks like, and uh, this can uh, resolve a small soft chalazia. <clears throat> if it is uh, located near the puncta, they want to do this because uh, they, they don't want to do uh, incise and curettage it because it might cause damage because it's very close to the puncta okay let's move on in the treatment guys we're done with two treatments here conservative and intralesional intralesional injection remember now coming to incision and curettage here you can see they are using what is called as a chalazian clamp clamp this is on the side there is a ring right they have put it on the conjunctival side on the other side there will be a circle see this is how it looks this is a chalazion clamp you can use it to fix the chalazion and achieve hemostasis okay see how they are holding it so then they are taking a sharp blade and uh, from the conjunctival side if they are going they are taking a vertical incision and they are draining this uh, chalazion okay uh, what you should understand is uh, uh, this uh, vertical incision from conjunctival side because you want to cut through only one of this uh, meibomian ducts glands right you don't want to cut the other uh, meibomian glands right that's why you are going a vertical incision however if they are going from skin side which is rare if they go from skin side they will go for uh, a horizontal incision to minimize the scar. Now, in this, uh, how they are doing? They are first giving surface anesthesia with uh, xylocaine, okay, with xylocaine drops, okay, and they are also giving xylocaine solution. So this is surface anesthesia. Just remember, okay, and uh, 
the surface anesthesia and uh, they uh, also what and all they are doing here once they incise this right they are uh, scooping out the contents with this scoop that is called as chalazion scoop this is also important guys where did it go chalazion scoop please chalazion scoop yes see it's like a cup in the front you just scoop it like an ice cream chalazion scoop okay after that what and all they are doing Car phenol uh, cautery carbolic acid cautery they are doing and they are neutralizing it with uh, methylated spirit to avoid recurrence okay and then they'll patch the eye uh, after they put antibiotic and then they'll patch the eye for about 6 to 12 hours please focus here guys so they are instilling antibiotic and then they are instill antibiotic and patch the eye for about 6 to 12 hours okay isn't that what they had written here wait yes patch the eye okay post operative treatment to decrease discomfort you should uh, give them hot fermentation after the operation hot uh, hot fermentation antibiotics anti inflammatory uh, uh, analgesics anti inflammatory analgesics nsaids that's what they mean is it oral antibiotics uh, all this you will give for a week okay so this is how they do incision and curettage for chalazion important okay then what are the other options <clears throat> if it is a marginal chalazion they are doing something called as diathermy some thermal treatment they are also giving oral tetracycline as prophylaxis in recurrent chalazia especially if these people have acne rosacea or seborrheic dermatitis because these people are more prone to this chalazion and this meibomitis even meibomitis so anything to do with meibomian glands these people are very uh, susceptible right so that's why in those people they'll give oral tetracycline as prophylaxis also remember this can become a malignant change so you have to keep checking for malignancy so differential diagnosis for a chalazion guys it can be carcinoma here they are using meibomian gland adenocarcinoma that's what they said right it could also be a tuberculomata what is tuberculomata and tarsitis tarsitis is uh, inflammation of the uh, tarsal border of the eyelid something like that. we are done with this uh, chalazion guys so what is chalazion it is meibomian cyst it is a non-infective chronic uh, lipogranulomatous inflammation of the meibomian gland the complications that can occur if you don't treat it will be um cornea blurred vision astigmatism it causes aversion of punctum ectropion epiphora then um, uh, if it bursts inside it will cause a fungating uh, mass of granulation tissue on the conjunctiva it can get infected and become an internal hordeolum calcification can occur malignant change can occur how will you treat it we already told you conservative form you will give hot fermentation antibiotics anti-inflammatory drugs otherwise there is <clears throat> intra-lesional injection of long-acting steroids like triamicinolone tri and uh, uh, what else uh, that is especially if it's near the puncta otherwise there is incision and uh, curettage we already told you give surface anesthesia with xylocaine and uh, chalazion clamp you will use to uh, hold the chalazion <clears throat> right then you will make vertical incision on the conjunctiva and then you will take a scoop and scoop it out right chalazion scoop and then you will treat it with carbolic acid etc etc then give antibiotic and then patch it and then post operative care diathermy is for the marginal uh, chalazion this is chalazion scoop this is how it looks and this is chalazion clamp this is how chalazion clamp looks we are done with chalazion mebonian cyst mybomian cyst bye bye